If you've got a work from home setup, chances are you've got at least two computers, aka a hybrid setup, one for personal use and the other one for work. Now, for the average consumer, most often than not, each computer usually has their own set of peripherals unless it's a laptop, and this usually leaves the desk super cluttered, cables strewn all over the place, not to mention the constant annoyance of plugging in and out the peripheral to be used. Now, without a doubt, most people want to make the switching between their two computers hassle-free but just can't get the hang of it. Well, say no more. This video breaks down the different ways you can go about it and the last method will shock you how seamlessly you can switch between your PC and Mac. Buckle up and let's go for the ride. Getting into it, the first thing you need to get in order is the layout of your setup, whether it's two monitors stacked on top of each other, side by side, or an ultra wide or super ultra wide monitor. From there, the different combos come into play. Whether it's two Mac computers, two PCs, or a Mac and PC, the choice is yours. But if you'd ask me, Mac and PC is the better combo as you get to experience the best of both ecosystems. Talking of the best of both worlds, between a dual monitor setup and a super ultra wide monitor, in my opinion, the super ultra wide monitor setup is more ideal for a hybrid desk setup and for few good reasons. The most obvious being the screen real estate which allows you to use both ecosystems side by side without the bezel in the middle thanks to the picture in picture mode which comes in most computers nowadays. Another reason would be, aesthetically, a super ultra wide looks a lot cleaner on a monitor stand compared to two monitors side by side or stacked on top of each other. In saying that, a dual monitor setup would work just fine, having a super ultra wide or an ultra wide monitor all comes down to your preference. With the display out of the way, let's get into the peripherals. When it comes to connecting the peripherals, there's a few ways you can go about it. One way is getting peripherals that can connect to two or three devices by simply pressing a button to switch between the sources. Method 2 is using a KVM switch and this is the one I'd highly recommend but since we are all different, you might want to check out method 3 and 4 a little later in the video. Starting off with multi-use devices, like mentioned earlier, this is the easiest but it's got a caveat. All you've got to do is switch the source then select either HDMI 1, 2 or DisplayPort to connect the device connected to that source. Starting with a keyboard, a decent amount of companies make keyboards that can connect up to three devices with just a press of a button, but by far the most popular is Logitech. The one I have in my current rotation is the Logitech MX Keyzers, which is definitely up there when it comes to productivity keyboards, but like I said earlier, different companies make keyboards with the same functionality, so if you prefer something different, Iconix, Newfie, among many others make really nice keyboards with the same functionality and for the mechanical keyboard enthusiast, if you'd ask me, these brands offer the perfect in-between for those who want to get into the enthusiast keyboard market but are not willing to spend all the money and time into a custom build. Keyboards aside, the mouse is the other peripheral that can connect to three different devices at a time and switch between them with just a press of the button. Once again, Logitech shines in this department and the latest in their mice lineup is the Logitech MX Master 3S. Just like its predecessors, it's the perfect productivity mouse and one of the most ergonomic mice in the game. Now, up until this point, switching between the two ecosystems is smooth, but here's where the catch I talked about a little earlier comes in. Speakers, mics and webcams don't have this capability although depending on the type of speakers you have, there's a way you can connect them directly to your monitor. Using an audio splitter that has two male ends and one female end, you can connect the male ends to your speakers, then connect another male to male aux cable into the female end of the splitter and the other end to your monitor. Something to note though, make sure you're getting an audio splitter that matches the setup you have. The example I've given is just a combo of how the audio splitter can work. Another thing to note with this method is, when playing audio from both your Mac and PC at the same time, the gain is going to be halved which is not ideal, that's why a KVM switch is the better option. Speaking of a KVM switch, let's bring those who don't know what it stands for and does up to speed. KVM basically stands for keyboard, video and mouse. And what it basically does is help you control, switch between and manage multiple computers or servers via a single keyboard, monitor and mouse. For context, 
just picture the number of computers, keyboard and mice that will be required to control each individual server at a data control center. I know, right? It would be absolute chaos. The good thing is, depending on the size of the data control center, the number of keyboard, mice and computers is going to be significantly reduced thanks to KVM models. Now, picture your test setup as a small data center and KVM switches work exactly the same way to reduce the number of peripherals required to control the computers in your setup. Speaking of which, since there are different types of KVM switches, this would be the perfect segue to talk about the right KVM switch for your desk setup. Now, I know you might be scratching your head and wondering, how does the second computer come in? Well, this is where we reintroduce devices that can connect to more than one monitor, the Logitechs and new views of the world. Then for the speakers, I suggest getting one that can directly connect to your monitor. But like mentioned earlier, this may result in your volume and gain being cut in half. If you'd like me to do a dedicated video on KVM switches, let me know in the comment section. Getting back to the hybrid setup build, I found this one from Ugreen to be the sweet spot for a hybrid desk setup as it's got 3 HDMI 2.1 ports, 4 USB-C ports of which 2 of the 3 ports at the back connect to your PC and Mac respectively and one can be used for power delivery. Then the one at the front serves the same function as the 3 USB-A 3.0 ports next to it in the form of connecting some of your peripherals to both ecosystems. You'll also like the fact that the HDMI ports are compatible with PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, so you can connect them whenever you want to. And the best part is, after connecting all your peripherals, you can plug in this controller and just with the press of a button, seamlessly switch between both ecosystems. Another way you can go about this is getting a monitor with a built-in KVM switch, but once again, there's a catch which we'll get into in just a bit. Now, before we get into it, some of the monitors that have built-in KVM switches include Gigabyte M27Q, MSI MAG401QR, Samsung S9, Dell U3423WE, just to name but a few. Just like an external KVM switch works, these monitors have a button that allows you to switch between the sources, but unlike external KVM switches, built-in KVM switches only cater for one part of the KVM trinity and that's the video bit. The keyboard and mouse need to directly connect to a computer then, when you throw in the speakers, things get more interesting. Moving along, as you've seen, the first three methods require you to jump through a decent amount of hoops before you get your hybrid desk setup up and running, but like I promised in the intro, you'll be shocked how smooth and seamless the switching can be with this method. Getting into it, you'll first need to download the software and while there's a bunch of them that can do this, I found Synergy and Barra to be the best. Something to note though, Synergy costs around 45 Australian dollars which is the equivalent of 29 US dollars. Good thing it's a one-time fee and once you pay for it, you can download it on any other compatible device, type in your login credentials and it will pop up in your server. Speaking of server, this would be the computer your mouse and keyboard are plugged into and for context, my mini PC is the server and my M1 Mac mini is the client. I know it sounds a bit complicated but it's super easy to set up. First, download the app on your server computer and give it a name, then switch to the client computer and go through the same procedure and once you're done, your client computer will pop up on the server and all you'll need to do is align them according to the layout of your computers to allow the mouse cursors to switch seamlessly otherwise it will be impossible. In my case, the server computer is on the left and the client computer is on the right. For those who don't want to spend 45 Australian dollars on Synergy, Barry is your uncle, if you know what I mean. It's basically a free open source version of Synergy and works exactly the same way although it's been known to have connectivity issues and from my personal experience and my maneuvers in the weeds of Reddit, I can positively confirm that. In saying that, my experience may not necessarily be the same as yours, so if you decide to go the barrier route, the GitHub website has been highly recommended by most people. Once again, after downloading, you'll have to choose a server and client computer. On Windows, the download and setup process is pretty straightforward, but when you switch to Mac OS, in classic Apple style, you'll have to jump a few hoops before you install it. More on that in just a bit. On Windows, after downloading, you'll need to click on Barrier, change settings, then disable SSL, and you'll see why when we get to the issues. Switching to Mac OS, which in this case will be my server computer, after downloading, a window will pop up saying Barrier cannot be opened because the developer cannot be verified, so to bypass this, close the pop-up window, 
open settings, go to privacy and security, then scroll down to security and in that window, you'll see an option to open it anyway. Open it then in accessibility, give it the permission to control your computer. After that, open the Barrier app and just like we did on the server computer, disable SSL then start running Barrier on the client computer, after which you'll switch to the server computer. On the server computer, click on Configure Monitor and just like we did in Synergy, align it according to the layout of your setup. After that, hit OK and reload your server computer. Ideally, it should connect without any issues but like mentioned a little earlier, Mine gives me issues on some occasions and today happens to be one of those. As you can see, it connects but I'm not getting the full functionality. The keyboard works but the only thing I'm getting from the mouse are clicks on the Mac OS side and couldn't get it to switch to Windows until I connected another mouse via Bluetooth and stopped running barrier on Mac OS. This prompted me to jump on Reddit to find solutions and from this thread, it appears a lot of people had the same issue. With that in mind, the next sensible thing to do was to find a solution and as pointed earlier, disabling SSL in some instances worked the magic but not this time. Another solution was to directly type in the server IP address into the client server but this still didn't work. Now, given the number of hoops you have to jump to get Barrier working, I'd suggest spending that money on Synergy and enjoy the stress-free switching between your computers. Connectivity issues aside, although not super important for the average consumer, the other issue would be connection to the speakers as they only work with the server computer. Here's an example. Now, if you've been paying keen attention, the speaker issue is consistent on all the other three ways of building a hybrid setup, except for the one with the physical KVM switch. If you've got workarounds, the speaker and barrier issues, feel free to help us out in the comment section. With pretty much all the ways you can build your hybrid desk setup laid out, the question you might ask is, which one is the best? Now, if you'd ask me, I'd say it's a very nuanced argument and it totally depends on what you prefer. Personally, my preference would be an external KVM switch as it allows you to add peripherals like printers, speakers without losing any gain or volume. But if speaker volume is not that big of a deal for you, then a monitor with an inbuilt KVM switch or multi-connecting keyboards or mice would work just fine. Finally, for those who want a seamless and trouble-free switching experience that doesn't require a lot of technical know-how to set up, a one-time purchase of Synergy will guarantee you exactly that. For the ultimate top-of-the-line user experience in your hybrid desk setup, I'd suggest getting a combo of an external KVM switch and Synergy if your budget allows. Well, there you have it peeps, the methods we've gone through are pretty much all the ways I've found on how to build a hybrid desk setup from scratch. If I left anything out, please let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, I hope this video helps you create your ideal hybrid desk setup. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, share and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. To see how I built the entire setup from scratch with no experience, check out this video. Until then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.